Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to improve your consistency because we're going to give you 24 tips to become more consistent on the paddle court and we're going to start right now. Bubbles. So the first team is natural preparation. So you need to be prepared for everything. So when you are at the net, always two hands and higher preparation because the ball is coming from there and you need to volley from high to low. So when you're at the net, always a little bit higher head height preparation and neutral, two hands on the racket because with your backhand volley, you need to prepare with both hands. So let's say I am prepared like this. A lot of people are like this and I'm going to make mistakes to be there. This is uh, not an amazing ball. So I want to be prepared with the correct continental grip over here. So backhand, I can solve the backhand and I can solve the forehand. When you're at the back, you will have a lower preparation because the ball is more likely to be low. So you will win a lot of time and be more consistent to have it here. Or I can play with the glass, a lob, and I win the point. So this is how low you need to be to the ground. When you are preparing, have your head always in front of your feet because now I am active and I can solve a lot of shots. If I am here or my head is back, I will have less balance and with less balance, I will make more mistakes. When you are in this ready preparation and you're going to be very low to the ground with your feet, I will be very slow and I will be late for the ball, which might end up that I lose my control because I have to rush. So when you are ready, you can go forwards and down, but your legs should be a little bit straight so you're faster. Because from here, I am not so fast anymore. From here, I have more quickness in my feet. I'm down and I go back up. So I go high down, high down. Active feet. So I always want to be active. And with Paolo, it's very important that if my partner gets all the balls, that I still remain active because Somebody is going to feed me the ball and I need to be there. And if I'm that quick, I have a lot of control. Keep moving. Stop. Yeah, and I keep moving. Pum, pum, pum. And keep moving. Pum, pum, pum. I'm never surprised. A relaxed but focused mind. If you're defending, for instance, I want to be ready, but I don't want to be too stressed when I'm at the back of the court because then I uh, end up not using any walls and I'm going to make mistakes. So if I am just there and relaxed, I can use the wall, I can play before the glass and I'm more focused on what I need to do. Team two, play with a plan. If you know where you're going to play the shot, you will be way more consistent than deciding last minute, oh, I'm gonna play there, oh, I'm gonna play there. And then you're gonna end up making lots of mistakes because you don't have a clear plan on what you're going to do. Up, 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 play with a plan. I just play left, right, left, right, left, right. I know what I'm doing, I'm not gonna make any mistake. If you make a plan and if you play the plan, you know more or less what the mistake is. So let's say we need to play lower or we need to play more balls into the corner and I end up playing straight. You know what is wrong with your game plan and with your strategy and why you're not winning or losing the points. And if you keep that focus, you know that sometimes just playing the ball into the corner with a soft pace is enough. And then you're able to win against better players just by knowing what to do and playing with a consistent shot that you can play well every single time you play the shot. If you have a plan, you know more or less better where the ball is coming from. So let's say my goal in the match is to play my backhand a lot of times to that position. So when I get a backhand, my preparation is a little bit prepared in a way that I'm able to play that shot. And if I want to switch last second to play the drop shot, I end up making a mistake. So I need to be very clear in my goal where to play the shot and the technique will follow. So if I have it correctly in my mind, the technique will follow and it will make it happen. So you don't want to think too much about your technique. You want to think a lot about your plan. Team number three, stable, active and functional footwork. Make a split step when your opponent hits the ball. If you make a split step when your opponent hits the ball, you can move into every direction in an easier and a faster way. So imagine I'm running forwards and I need to change direction. I'm going to end up making lots of mistakes and my technique becomes a little floppy because I don't have a clear base. And that's one of the most important things that I'm going to tell you today. Especially for the Chiquita, 
it is important that when I move, I do a split step so I can move in every single direction. When you hit, have two feet on the ground before, during and after you hit to have the maximum balance as possible. This is something that we call ground reaction force. You need to have some force on the ground when you hit. You don't want to be too high when you hit because you have less ground reaction force. You want to be on the ground, not too low, but like good balance, like you should balance on a skateboard or a surfboard and then play the forehand. This is one of the most important things. If you have one foot off the ground or you keep moving when you're hitting, you're going to end up making loads of mistakes. So before, during and after the shot, don't move. One of the best drills to do is to hit the shot, two second hold, and then get back into action. It's gonna help you a lot to do that exercise. Head balance, one of the most important things to have balance in paddle. When Roger Federer is hitting the ball, he's playing the ball there, boom. He's looking at the contact point, and then he looks there. You will make a lot of mistakes when you are hitting the ball and you move to see how your ball is ending up. This is one of the most common mistakes. People make mistakes on the paddle court. If your head is not stable, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. So keep looking at the ball a little bit longer. I highly recommend to, to warm up like that. So when I warm up on the paddle court, I play the ball, I look at the contact point, and then I look to the other side of the court. It makes me hit the ball more clean, to have more balance, and to have better focus on the court. So a good warm up as well is gonna make tons of improvement. When you move in paddle, only make two steps at a time. You don't want to make 33 steps when you hit. So when you are moving to a specific location after you hit the shot or you're moving towards the ball, make sure you just do two steps. So your positioning is very, very important, but when you move to the net, for instance, don't move so fast. Avoid moving very fast. Move slowly, take two steps and that's it. It's better to take the ball from a bad position when you're stable, instead of hitting the ball from a good position, unstable. So try to be calm, move calm, just move on the paddle court like you're on holiday and you're getting to the cocktail bar and you order a coffee. Also, it's very nice to see that more Italian people are watching the YouTube channel. So if you're Italian, let me know below where you're from in Italy. So to say, dai or andiamo. Team number four, the racket preparation. This is what I work on with most of my students because it gives the most effect in a short period of time. So the racket preparation is the most important thing technically wise to improve the control. My rules about the preparation, prepare early. So prepare your racket before the ball bounces on your side of the court. If you're using the glass, the same. Don't prepare your racket when the ball hits the glass. Already have the preparation clear. And this is also where the tactic come from. If you know you're playing the lob, you know you're preparing more open and you can play the lob. If you don't know you're going to play the lob or you decide very late on that you're going to play the lob, your preparation might be like this and then you switch last second and that's where you lose control and that's what you don't want to have. Let's say I know I'm gonna play four and folly. I'm just gonna be here and I just play the shot. The moment you don't know what you are doing and you think, oh, nice ball. Okay, what do I do, what do I do? Oh, I smash. I don't have a lot of control. So decide early, prepare and hit. Also on the preparation, make a short preparation. You never need a big preparation in paddle. It's a control game, it's not a power game. Small preparation, then freeze the preparation. So when I play the forehand volley, I prepare like this, I wait and then I hit. Also prepare before you move. So let's say I am going to get the ball and the ball is at the camera. I'm going to play the backhand volley. I'm going to prepare here and then run with the racket and then volley the ball. I am not going to run first and then play the backhand volley. And you already see that I'm losing the control of the racket because I have to move it very fast. So the preparation should be short, slowly, on the same height as the incoming ball, and it should be frozen before you hit. I don't want to prepare all the way here. It is quite hard to play the bandeja. It would be better to prepare here and play the bandeja. And I can also play from here quite fast, as you can hear of the shot. Also, when you prepare small, you can do more effect. It is easy to time that. When you prepare, it is better to have it frozen. So when I prepare the racket for the bandeja, it is frozen here, and then I play the shot. 
So I'm waiting with the preparation here. A good drill that you can do is wait for Sasha to play. I'm here and I play it. Then I have maximum control. The moment I am still going backwards and then I play the bandeja, I play faster but less control. So when you prepare also for the smash, I'm already here and then I play the shot. So always prepare, freeze it and then hit it. Team number five is direction. Where should you be playing to make less mistakes and to have more control over your shots? Well, first things first, it is easier to play the ball where it came from. So if somebody plays the ball cross court and I play the ball to the same direction back, I will probably make less mistakes. If I change direction of the ball, so let's say the ball is coming from the left player and I play the ball back to the right player, I can make mistakes. So play to the player where the ball came from in order to have more control of your shots. Play the same angle back. With tennis, this is where I make most of my mistakes from. I was playing a, like a high ball low or a low ball high. This is where paddle players also make most of mistakes. So let's say somebody plays a very fast volley to me and I try to lob that shot before the glass. It is super hard to play a good lob. It is way easier to play a lob on a lob because then the uh, direction of the ball, the angle, the trajectory is similar. So you want to mirror the trajectory of the ball. If somebody plays a lob, lob them back. If somebody plays fast, play fast back. If somebody plays slow, play slow back. Then you have the most control possible. Fully overhead, everything more cross courts. So when you're at the net, it's better to play more cross courts because the, the angle is longer. So you will make less mistakes and you feel like you have more control and you can direct the speed better. If you play more cross courts when you're at the net with your bandejas, with your smashes, with your volleys, you will make less mistakes, you will be more consistent and you hurt your opponent actually more because it's more complicated to defend the ball into the corner. So if you want to be more consistent, choose the longer angle to make less mistakes and dominate your opponent as well. Defend more in the center. So. If you play your defensive shots in the center, it is harder for the net players to play the ball into the angle. So let's say you play outside, so you play on the back end of the player on the left and on the forehand on the player on the right, they can play more into the angle, you will get more difficult shots back and you will make more mistakes because you play them a good shot. So it is easier also to slow down your defensive shots in the center then it will be hard for them to generate power and it will be hard for them to put you into the corner and to force you to play a mistake. So soft and in the center and you will win all of your matches. Team six, machine mentality. This is what I do on the court is I act like I am a machine. So one of the most important things is I don't want to show any negative emotion to my opponent. If you show negative emotion, you will feel negative emotion. If you show neutral or positive emotion, it is way less likely that you are going to be angry on the court or to feel upset or to think of the negative shot or to think of the mistake you made. So only be a machine, neutral or positive. Avoid testosterone shots. So you don't want to smash because you feel like you have to smash. You don't want to hit hard because you want to play hard or that you want to win the point with a fantastic shot. You want to play the game of paddle. You need to be clever about your shots. If somebody is out of position, you don't need to play amazing. You can just play slow behind them or slow to the fence, slow scoring shots. Choose your scoring shots on a clever idea or a clever plan not on emotion. Fail harder. If you go for the shot, go for the shot. And I don't mean that you have to hit your shot 100%. You have to hit every single shot, in my opinion, on 70% of your power, but then play it in a relaxed way and play it. And if you fail, fail as hard as possible. Don't push the ball because you're scared to make a mistake. If you lose the game, you lose the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you play a friendly game and you are scared of losing, what are you doing? Seriously, it's just, it doesn't matter. Is it because of your ego, you don't want to lose? It is such a very big mistake if you 
are scared to lose or scared to play the shots you need to play to improve. If you need to play your bandeja because you are making mistakes by the bandeja or you're not playing the bandeja because you're playing the smash, like if your smash is amazing and you're scared to play the bandeja, listen, do you want to be better or do you want to win a game? Winning a game is here, becoming better on the court is here. So this is the difference. If you choose to win that game with your shots that you are already playing, there is absolutely zero, it's just stupid. I have nothing to say about that. It's, I just want to show you, and this might be the most important thing that I'm gonna tell you today, is choose for improvement and don't choose to win the game. Give yourself some time to make loads of mistakes, to get that level, and then if you choose to go to that mindset, you're going to win so much matches more than just by playing the same shots that you can already do. If you want to see more videos like this or more things about mentality, because I did not make so many videos about that and I, I think it's the most important thing besides the paddle shots. So yeah, let me know if you're, everybody's open to do that. I'm happy to make those videos. I have struggled a lot with my mentality, especially when I was 12, 13 years old. And now I changed it and I learned some good tools on the court that I could make less mistakes on. So uh, if that will be nice, let me know below and uh, thank you all for watching this video. Hasta luego, ciao, adios. Ladies and gentlemen, I do have one announcement to make that I want to thank Royal Paddle for all the years that they sponsored me. They were the first brand that spotted me and believed in my videos two years ago. And I really appreciate that, but I am going to move on to play with another brand from the week after this video. So I just wanted to thank Royal Paddle for sponsoring me, helping me out and uh, giving me the opportunity to do record reviews. Even though I got sponsored by Royal Paddle, they were a very, very good partner. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, let me know what brand I'm going to play with.